Hey buckaroos and buckarettes, it's good to be back with you and today I'd like to talk to you about a new high-speed video camera called a Kronos 1.4, this thing right here. Um, high-speed video cameras have been getting a lot better recently and this one I think represents a new generation that's, that's just now becoming available uh, as I make this video. This one was purchased for me by a company that made a very generous donation to uh, my college, so thank you to those guys. Um, this just the company just came off of Kickstarter and this camera is really kind of beta test. Not all the features on it work yet because the, the firmware isn't quite up to date. But all the important ones do and it works very well. Now these things have gotten a lot cheaper uh, in the last few years. About, I don't know, 16 years ago now, 15 years ago. I bought one at a company I worked for, a, a, what was then a good commercial high speed video camera. It was not nearly as capable as this. It was big. It came in this big flight case and it was $50,000. This was less than $4,000. And so I'm now able to put th this into the hands of my students. And what I'd like to tell you about today is just a little bit about how this camera works and an initial test on you know, showing what we could do with it. So the camera itself is just a little box that seems to have basically a computer in it. There, let's see if you bring this up where you guys can see it, is where the SD card lives. So when you make a recording, it saves right there. And it's got what's called ring memory in it. When you, what you do is when you press the start button here, the record button, press power, press record right there, it just starts recording and pushes uh, all your data, all your frames into memory. When it gets a new frame, it pushes it in one end and, dr and dumps the oldest frame. So it always records what's just happened. So when you stop it by hitting that, what you get is all the events it's just recorded. Now you get to choose frame rate based on uh, memory, uh, data through the memory bus basically. This will take, uh, send 1.4 gigapixels per second through the memory or through the data bus on this thing. So 1.4 gigapixels pixels per second, divide them up however you want them. The more resolution you want, the lower your frame rate. And this will go to uh, 1280p, so 1280 by 1024, about 1,000 frames a second, I think. Um, I'm finding out that with a, a modest decrease in uh, resolution, I can go to, let's see, one point, uh, one of the tests I'm going to show you was 1771 frames per second and the other was on the neighborhood of 3500. I have done tests at 4500, which is pretty darn nice, okay? And it uses a standard C mount, okay? There's a, there's a couple of standard lens mounts. One's called a C mount and lots of video cameras use this. It comes with a of uh, a uh, nice zoom lens. I pulled that off and put this on. This is a high speed video lens I had from an old camera. And if you can, this is a 50 millimeter lens and it's f.0 or 0.95, which in photographer terms is called a fast lens. In sort of slang, this thing is basically a light bucket. This is about as uh, light sensitive a lens as I could find anywhere. The lower the f number, the more light basically you can. Uh, uh, get from it. The more bigger the aperture is, is really what that means. Um, and so I put this lens on it. And I say it comes with a nice uh, uh, zoom lens that's f point or f two, I think, something like that. It also comes with. You can either buy a monochrome or a color. Uh, array on it. I bought the monochrome because it takes less light. What I'm finding out is this works fine in sunlight. Sunlight's brighter than you think it is. And, I, and uh, inside, one or two halogen lights, typical uh, video halogen lights, works fine. So, what do you do for a test? Well, uh, people who've watched my channel know that I've got uh, made some guns that shoot ping pong balls. And I have a subsonic and a supersonic gun. Well, I took the subsonic gun to a local school and we did a science lesson for the little kids there. So the idea was we're going to take one of these and shoot it through one of these, empty. And what you get out the other end is that, okay? There's, that's not the one we did the other day, but it's like the one we did the other day. So that's where the ping pong ball went through. So, outside, had plenty of light. First uh, a video clip was 1,771 frames per second, and we shot at one can. So, here's the video clip. It's very short because the event happens over milliseconds, and even at 1,771 frames a second, you don't get very many frames. So, I stored it using the camera. I told it to store and play back at five frames a second. So, here's the video.
Now, if you want to uh, go back and forth in this video clip, you can see the ball come through and hit the can. It's very clear. You can see the ball emerge from the back of the can in, in fragments. The ball doesn't come out looking like this. In fact, the ball we were using was actually orange, but it doesn't matter in, in high-speed video. And, but you can see all the fragments come out the back. Well, that happens in milliseconds, far, far too quickly to see it any other way. But it was very easy using this camera. The second shot used two cans. Now, we taped them together because it was windy outside when the, can, the, camera, the can was blowing around. This one was at slightly reduced resolution and now closer to 3,500 frames a second. Now the, the, ball, the gun is variable and the, the, the muzzle velocity changes quite a lot. The muzzle velocity on this second shot was probably lower. And you can see now that the ball is coming through and it's going to hit the front can. Uh, if you very carefully step through the frames, you will see that when the ball first hits the can, cracks propagate through the back of the ball. So the ball is cracking even before it's completely impacted the can. And then the front can wraps around it and then they, they, they uh, sail out of frame. When we were done, the teacher, Mr. Brantley, took the can, the first one that had, the, that had crunched up, opened it up and poured the pieces of the ping pong ball out of it. Worked like a champ. I'm looking forward to doing a lot more with my new Kronos 1.4. It uh, There's all these features over here that don't seem to work yet, but will. The hardware's there, it's just not there in software. So there's an Ethernet link and a SATA link and HDMI, and you can actually send a trigger signal to it. So you can trigger when to have it uh, record frames. So it gives you a little bit of control. And those, those should be coming with uh, uh, future firmware updates. So initially, you know, not sure yet, haven't had it very long, but initially seems pretty good. From what I know now, uh, I recommend it. My next step is I'm putting this in the hands of my dynamic students, and I'm going to ask them to make videos for this channel. So I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.